Привіт, everybody! Welcome to our bomb shelter. My name is Masha, I'm Ukrainian and I show stories about how we live during the war. Since February 25th, my family and I have spent tens of hours in this bomb shelter, which is a regular underground parking lot. It took probably 10 minutes to get here from the apartment. We could go down and back home seven times a day. I even joked that we might accidentally set a world fastest dressing record. To get ready quicker, we slept dressed, and the cats slept in their carriers. I want to mention that it was their choice. Then we managed to sleep for three or four hours at a time. In the first day of war we were confused because we didn't know how to live. We truly didn't believe it would happen. Instead we spoke Russian and did not expect a full-scale invasion. Last February it was cold in bomb shelter. At the same time it was frosty and snowy outside. After four hours in underground I couldn't feel my toes. Therefore, over time we bought a lot of blankets, yoga mats and pillows from the sofa to be able to hide and sleep. One of us was asleep while another was walking around the parking lot to keep warm and watch the news. Then, after a few days, we bought a small table, chairs and a teapot. <laughs> and I bought a Susan tea. Haha. <laughs> I feel so weird to be here. We spent a lot of time there, so we tried to make it comfortable. I remember that moment when you frozen, sleepless. You warm yourself in the hottest shower and go to bed. And everything seems to be normal for a moment, until the next alert. By the way, on my Patreon I published a diary entirely about the first day of war. A little bit later I will post the following. You can support me there by any subscription and I will tell you many personal and interesting things in return. Thank you for any of your subscription. It means a lot to me. Okay, our next station is the center of Kyiv. Let's go for a walk and I'll tell you something about Kyiv that I hope will surprise you. First of all, here is a very cheap transport. For example, metro costs 18 cents and it can reach from one end of the city to other in 40 minutes. It's so comfy. The subway is clean and safe, but quite noisy. But it can be crowded during peak hours. Due to the last reasons, I have chosen ground transport. But everything changed during the war. The subway in Kyiv is the most reliable bomb shelter. It will save even from a nuclear attack. That's why I take a subway much more often now. Next, architecture. In some places the center of Kyiv is a double of Paris. Mm -hmm. Because a long time ago the people of Kyiv so much wanted to have the atmosphere of French capital here. And it's believed that they partially succeed. I haven't been to Paris yet, but if you have been there, do you see something in common here? I want to be surprised if after the war this is where fourth season of Emily in Paris will be filmed. God no, please, I'm joking. No more Emily in Paris, please. By the way, in recent years many filmmakers have come to shoot commercials and music videos in Kyiv. Filming here is often cheaper than in any European country, Canada or USA. By the way, not far from my house, exactly one year ago, a children shoot a music video. I just freaked out when I realized where they were dancing. Passed this crossing more than 500 times. And maybe when they were filming, I was sweetly sleeping 500 meters away under the blanket with my cat and didn't even imagine how my life will change in the next three months. Next. Food. Ooh la la! In Kyiv it is super tasty and cheap to eat. For example, we have cafe such as Yaroslava. It has been selling bacon here for 75 years. One bun costs 50 cents. A long time ago a friend from university brought me to this bakery for the first time. 
I remember how probably 10 years ago I came to the bakery on the first evening today after school and bought cacao and a cinnamon bun. It was so sweet, so cozy and a little bit faster for me. I received a scholarship from the university for good studies. It was 700 grivnas, that's 80 dollars. And this bakery was my restaurant, which I could afford. Now in Kyiv it is normal to have delicious meal for $10 for two. Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about the street food, but about, for example, an Indian restaurant in the center of Kyiv with delicious curry and chicken butter masala. I want to mention that Kyiv continues to live. Look, during their full-scale invasion, more than 100 restaurants were opened in the city. Many restaurateurs bought their businesses from other cities, which they had left because of Russia. It is difficult, especially now without electricity, but they do not give up. Next, people. More than three and a half million people live in Kyiv. At the beginning of the war, more than a million citizens left the city. Now I feel most people returned home, but not 100%. In my opinion, Kyiv is densely populated. But New Yorkers, Londoners and Istanbulites like... <clears throat> honey, what about more than 8 million or even 11 million citizens? As in Istanbul. And I tell you this, it's too much for me. My head is from a large number of people. I grew up in a small town, as I told you in the previous video. You can check it here. Next, center of Kyiv. We called it Khrushchev, because that's the name of the main street. To be honest, I don't like the center. I don't like this place. It isn't close to me aesthetically. There is a lot left over from the Soviet past and its architecture. There is one thing I truly like about Khrushchev. In 2014, a great Ukrainian revolution took place on the street. Even then, Ukrainians fought for their values to the last. And this time, 100% that we will win too. To be honest, I have a difficult relationship with Kyiv because I adore its historical center, but I really don't like residential areas. But I hope I have conveyed my love for it and told you something interesting. Click like if I did. And watch my next video about life in Ukraine. До побачення, everybody!